Say, what's in the bag, man? All right. Welcome to 2017. On this one, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a um, what's in my bag and gear review on the, the gear, what I would normally take on a winter wild camp using the tent. So first and foremost, I think I've gear reviewed this um, a few times actually uh, on previous camps. It's a Van Gogh Contour 5 plus 10. Nothing more to say about it really. It's um, absolutely brilliant, fits my needs. It holds just about everything what I need. Um, plenty of space inside. The strap system, excellent. Plenty of comfort there. You hardly know it's on your back actually when it's fully laden, so nothing more to say about it really. It's, you know, brilliant. So that, that's me rucksack. Next bit of kit, sleeping bag, essential bit of kit. This one is a Van Gogh Ultralight, three to four season. I haven't tried it out uh, properly yet. When I say properly, I mean in like minus temperatures, just to see what it's really made of. With. So we'll keep you informed um, how it performs. Um, later on. I'm planning on doing a, another wild camp in a couple of weeks so it'll probably get um, tried out then. So that, that's the Van Gogh Ultra Light 900. Incidentally it comes in its own little compression sack as well so it, it, it just goes into, into nothing nice and light. Next bit of essential kit is the Van Gogh Banshee 200. Um, I've gear reviewed it a couple of times on previous camps. The, the waterproof qualities is excellent. Um, and it's, it's also quite good in uh, stormy conditions as well, really windproof. There's one thing which is really good about this, which ticks all the boxes, and that's the fact doesn't have these silly zips, you know, when you're trying to pack a tent away and you're trying to squeeze it in the bag and trying to drive on and punch it in and whatever. This comes with its own drawstring and the bag's really, you know, there's plenty of space in there. So if you're in a hurry, you can just kind of like roll it up really quick and just bung it in there. Drawstring, couple of straps just to hold it in place. And uh, that's it. It's a canny little tent. It's a two man. Um, I wouldn't have said it was a two man actually. By the time I get all my gear in it and what have you, there's probably just about enough room for for one person. Well, my size anyway. So if you're thinking about going away with the missus, probably go for the uh, the next one up, the Banshee 300. Um, you, you probably get away with that one okay. So that's um, that's me ten. Easy to erect it. I can get this uh, up in about five minutes. So you don't want to be like clocking and trying to put a tent up and you know so this one ticks all the boxes. So that's that's the tent. What else? Self-inflating air mattress. Airbed. This is a three quarter length one. Uh, it says self inflating, but you, you know, you've always got to like put some air into it as well just to make sure that it's properly sort of like, um, you know, full of air. So that this one's by a company called Mountain Equipment. I've, I've had it out a few times actually, it, it is quite good. Good bit of insulation as well, especially uh, in the window. So I think it was about 50 quid, if I remember rightly, or, or somewhere thereabouts. So that's the self-inflating airbed. Uh, what next? This is something what I would tend to, to bring along on a, on a sort of like winter wild camp. You know, if you get wet, you get to the tent and you know, you want to dry off. This is a micro towel. 
Um, it's a tiny little thing to have really. Uh, there's nothing worse than sort of like being wet and your, your hair's wet and you know just a quick rub of that and you know you, you, you're good to go sort of thing and it weighs next to nothing, packs into nothing so a nice little thing to, to bring along. It's kind of like a, a creature of comfort as well. First aid kit, what can I say? Always make sure you've got a first aid kit. I mean, we thrown in woods uh, video and just prove that really for those of you that have seen it. Um, it's got all the, the things what you need in a first aid kit, bandages, sling, antiseptic cream, that sort of thing. So that's a, that's a must have. Cooking system. OEX, this one is a porosity stove. I think it was under 20 quid actually. Comes in its own little bag. Just get it out. The only thing is it's a bit of a chow on getting it in and out of the bag. Um, but that, that's it there basically. There's a good flame on it. Good steady flame, um, packs into nothing. As a safety precaution, I carry a hexi stove as well, just in case the, um, the stove packs, packs up. You've got a secondary means of cooking your food and doing your brews. There's be nothing worse than sort of like, you know, you haven't got nothing hot to drink or hot to eat, your morale goes down, you get cold. Just an extra bit of bag up, peace of mind really. And I normally either have hexi blocks or these, which are fire dragon cubes. Um, these have a good burn on them. Actually, you, you don't end up all of that um, sooty crap on the on the bottom of your um, your pans and, and what have you. So you get a clean burn off them. I normally carry about three just in case, um, but they're quite small and they go in there quite nicely. So that, that's a hexi stove. My gas, I generally go for the, the jet boil, jet power. It's like the propane fuel mix. It's quite good for working at low temperatures as well. What I would say is if you do, you know, you are cooking in, in cold temperatures using propane, just maybe put it under your jumper or something like that just to warm it up a bit and you should be good to go again. I'll go for the, the bigger one actually than the smaller one. They're about the same price so you, you can do a lot more cooking and that sort of thing with, with one of these. The little ones that just go nowhere so you know for the sake of an extra little bit weight and size go for the bigger one. Crusader mug does all my cooking, all my brews, and really I, I don't need to carry anything else. You know, they, they are quite big as well, you can get a lot in them. So, British Army as well, bulletproof, can't go far, far wrong with them. So that, that's my Crusader mug. Always have them as well. These are a three in one, which have your, your sugar and your milk. If you don't take sugar, just go for the two and ones. It's all I have. I take really throws up into nothing. Stuff them in your crusader mug. Spork. Really don't go for all of these sort of like knife and fork foldy up things and you know that does me everything I need just right there. It's light, fills away into nothing. Ideal. Right, what's next? Um, yeah, I just bought this yesterday. It's a little, um, it's a little lantern by Black Diamond. I don't know whether you can see the little fold away thing there, where you can just hang on to your tent. It's a, I think it's a hundred looms this one, so it is quite bright, you know. So it, it, it's all you need really, and it's about the size of an apple. You know, it's, it's just no size at all and it's light as a fella. It takes three, 
travel air batteries for this and it was about 20 quid so when you're doing a lot of camping in winter you're going to spend a lot of time in your tent you know so you don't want to be sort of like dark and especially if you're videoing so that that ticks all the boxes for me brilliant bit of kit um, just as a secondary means of getting about in the dark um, I generally bring this with us as well uh, again it's got a, quite a good beam on it it's waterproof and apparently I've heard you can actually run over the thing with your car and it, it still stays in one piece this was bought um, for me for my birthday of my mate Jonathan so it's a little bit of kit it comes with me everywhere I go Clothing, right, um, this is based on a, on a winter wild camp scenario, right, base layer, me, me wrap base layer, fleece over the top, mid layer, again by wrap, uh, nice bit of, bit of kit, keeps, keeps me nice and warm anyway, um, on top of that, um, if it's cold, just a drag trusted down jacket really. This one falls up into its own little bag. Uh, as you can see, it's, you know, you probably get it down even to half that size. Just nothing, quite light. Or if it's raining, I've, I've went for the, the Crag Hoppers. It's waterproof jacket. I've had it on a few times and it, it is quite good. It's windproof and waterproof, quite light. Um, you can probably wear it over the down jacket as well. So that, that's that. Another essential bit of kit. Well, I think you are anyway. Um, you probably know yourselves if you've been out in the cold. Your hands get really numb. You can't really do anything. Especially when you're, you're trying to cook and fumble on with stuff. Good set of gloves to keep your hands warm. They come with the inner fleece. Uh, ones as well you can just wear them by themselves or they go over the top of them so I've had them on a few times in the they do that actually quite good they, they buy a company called Blue Mountain I think they're around about the 20 quid mark so that's me gloves good pair of waterproof uh, sorry not waterproof windproof pants again by Crack Hoppers nice and light I've had these on a couple of times in the yard. Quite, they have got quite good windproof properties as well. And they, if they do get a bit wet, they dry out pretty quick as well. So they're like a like a canvas sort of pants. So they're quite good. Um, what else? Yeah, waterproof bottoms always come with me in their own little bag. So they're. They're a must as well. So this is my little um, knick-knack bag, uh, just for them little things. Uh, energy storage device, Kodak. I've used it a couple of times. It, you know, I put about 50% of life back on my phone. So a piece of mind there. Um, spare battery. This is for me little action camera if you've seen any of me video seen any of me videos and um, this has been on um, quite a few of them it's uh, by a company called Kaiser Bass and it's it's minuscule in size really small it comes with a little LCD screen on the back you'll, you'll find that thing uh, waterproof case has all the qualities of a GoPro but half the price it's waterproof down to about 40 meters, something ridiculous like that. I've got all the accessories for it as well, the head mount, that sort of thing. Uh, quite good, quite a bit, quite a good bit of kit. Uh, so yeah, I'd recommend it to anybody that you know, want a, a good little action camera, but half the price of a GoPro. Like I say, that's that's the spare battery which I ordered off eBay. 
come from China, took about two months or something ridiculous like that for it to come. So always keep your spare, some spare berries. Um, something else I want to bring along as well, just when I get a little bit of, when I get a bit lonely and that sort of thing, a bit of music. So that connects up to my phone via Wi-Fi, uh, so you can just blast away all your favourite tunes when you're in the wilds and wannies of nowhere, just have it as loud as you like and just go a little bit crazy, you know. Um, so that's, that's that. Some paracetamol in case you, you know, you have a little bit too that'll give you a favourite tipple and you wake up, uh, you know, a little bit worse for wear in the morning. So some painkillers. Bit of a lifesaver there, actually. Um, hip flask for medicinal purposes. So you, you know, fill it with brandy or whiskey or whatever, whatever your tipple is. Good little bit of a morale booster there as well. Something to warm you up on the cold night, so that's my little hip flask. Uh, right, what's next? To me, I think these are essential to have because it's been known that um, GPSs and satellite navigation systems, that sort of thing, can pack up, you know, for no reason. Always have a secondary means of getting about. So I go for the waterproof map. I've had ordinary ones in the past and when, you, when they get wet, they just turn to mush. So I go for the waterproof one in a tried and trusted compass and most importantly, just familiarize yourself with them, with the area that you, you're going to, a bit of pre-planning and just learn how to use the basics. Really, it could be a lifesaver. Always come with me. So that's, that's the map and compass. Right, what's next? Um, I think that's probably about it. So that, that's all my gear, what I use on a typical winter wild camp using my tent. Obviously, my gear will differ, differentiate a little bit when I do like a bushcraft camp. So I might do a little bit of a what's in my bag gear review for a typical bushcraft wild camp. So thanks for watching and um, we'll see you hopefully in a couple of weeks when I do my next wild camp. I, I'm thinking about going to the lakes for that one. Um, hopefully there should be a little bit of snow and that sort of thing just to make it a little bit more interesting. So look forward to seeing you then and all the best. Catch you later.